I still have with me Representative um, Abanikuru, and he was just telling us about you know what he had done on the floor of the House and how he represented his people at the federal legislative chamber. So please um, go ahead. You're talking about education and what he had done. Yes. So education in ATL, so. like, like I said, we identified that they, they had lack of facilities on ATL constituency one. So we attracted about four schools there now. And we have also provided free school bus to convey our children from constituency one to two and back to one. And that is so that parents can be at peace, that their mm. children are safe. Now, also, over the summer time, when we know that in, sometime in August, when we know that school is about to resume, we do free summer coaching so that we okay. can prep children for their next uh, for the next class, session. you know, next session that's about to start. So we do that. And we, we do give free jam form and the uh, GCE forms just to help some parents, you know, cushion the effect of the financial uh, issues. Now, during, in the early uh, days of this administration, COVID hit. And so this administration was handicapped for about seven, eight months mm -hmm. when we had the lockdown, you know, the lockdown effect. So during that lockdown, we partnered with uh, an NGO whereby we fed people for, I think, about a month on a daily basis, okay. straight. And I also gave out free, um, you know, food, f food items, just to help people, you know, uh, nose masks, hand sanitizers, to help people with cushion yeah, the, effect the effect of, of the, the lockdown. Mm -hmm. So we did all that during um, COVID. And then after COVID, uh, fast forward, we had... Uh, uh, toll issue where you know Lekki Toll wanted to you know resume. Well, that's your role in that. I you know wrote them a letter letting them know that I don't think this is the right time for them to resume tolling, especially because of the fuel scarcity. So and today they have not uh, they are yet to start. Uh, but I mean, but what tolling. was your role in the whole protest? In the whole protest before what, the, what was before your the, idea of it? Before the protest even started, we had written a letter to the IG in that effect, that he should try everything within his power to call to order some men of their, uh, uniform men of their operatives. And we did that trying to prevent, you know, the old um, uh, protest. But be as it may, it happened. We all, you know, we've moved past it now. Um, Were you at the protest? One of, one, of, one or two times I showed, uh, you know, support to, to the protest at the at the toll gate, uh, I went there. One twice, I think I went there. Um, so those are some of the few things that we have done, and we do have town hall meetings whereby we go to different areas to engage the community. Mm. It was in the process of doing that that I met some uh, elderly citizens that uh, were not getting their pensions paid. So we intervened in that matter. And today, pension from the state or from the federal? From the federal. Right. Today, they are getting their pensions paid. And so many other ways like that, that we've helped some of our children get into schools. We've helped some of our paupers move away from volatile areas to, you know, safe areas on the, uh, on the south side. And so many other things that we have done, we have been able to, because we know that the state government and the LCDAs and the local government are struggling mm. with uh, infrastructure. We've been able to also help facilitate road rehabilitation. So we've done about eight roads up to date, uh, one in Ipoyobalindi, one in Victoria Island, three in uh, Etiosa West, and I think two in Etiosa East. We've also, we, know, we also realize that a lot of areas are dark at night, you know, and dark spots cause for insecurity. So we've been able to also facilitate over 200 solar street lights that spans across Etiosa as a as a city. Mm. So, also we've been able to also do two facilitate two uh, healthcare centers in Lafayette. One is completed. We are be in between handing over now to the local government where operations will begin. The other is still very much under construction, and we've also helped. Uh, Lafayette area request for permission to build a police post in addition to beefing their security. You know, when I hear that like, you guys build this, you build that, is this kind of the functions of a legislator? That's why I've been using the word facilitate. And that's why I've been telling you the political angle of it. 
Mm. As a legislator, our duty is to make laws, edit laws, move motions, and then oversight the functions of the executive, executive arm of government and also to approve the budget for the executive arm of government. That is what a legislator is supposed to do. Now, as a legislator, you also have some opportunities to speak and demand for your people. That is where all these facilitations come in, where we thereby facilitate building of schools, facilitate building of roads, mm. facilitate bringing empowerment programs, which we have done so many. We've empowered a lot of artisans, hairdressers, caterers, farmers, and giving them equipment to also try to start uh, okay. a business on their own. So that, that's, that's fantastic. Now, our topic for today is, can the young Nigerians count on Banikuru? That's yeah. our topic for today. And, you know, as a youth myself, mm -hmm. and who is politically aware, there's several issues in the country right now. Nigeria right now is in a crisis. The security issues. There's issues of um, the economy, mm -hmm. unemployment. Yes. There's issues with the educational system. Yes. There's even issue of flood now. Yes. You know, so there are all these issues, and I would like to take it one after the other and tell us your agenda. What do you plan for all these things? And I want to start with where I would think is your comfort zone, which is agriculture. Mm -hmm. Agriculture is a major, major issue in this country right now. There's the issue of the herdsmen. There's the issue of, you know, farmers not getting their produce to town, or this and that. And I know you're big in this agricultural industry. So what are your plans? Well, unfortunately, as a legislator, I can't have any plans to tackle these issues. These are legislative. I mean, I said policy-wise. Uh, these, uh, these are executive harm of government uh, issues. And like I said, in terms of policy, I can't make policy for agencies as well. Mm. What I can do, you know, in the House, we can move bills and motions. Yes. Bills are what you move to, that eventually become laws of the land. Yes. Motions are for emergencies mm -hmm. when you have an urgent need for something to be done. So you move the bill, I mean the motion on the floor of the house. Mm -hmm. So th that is where if you look, if you pay attention to one of our sittings, you will see that there is no day that a member does not move a motion on the need or urgent need or calling for attention of security operatives to come and save one area or the other from either bandits or what, 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 this, what do these motions achieve? Every day we hear motion, motion, motion. We want to resolve. What, what, what would it translate well, to for let's, the let's, American let's, let us, let us be realistic with ourselves. Mm. If you look at it today, compared to last year, the year before, the amount of attacks or civic unrest has reduced tremendously. I'm not saying it has gone, but do it you has. You think so? They'll still, they'll still say they'll still the attack, a Kadana train attack. That was how long ago? That was, I think, in April yes, or a day about. about. And after that, we've not really ago. heard any. Unlike before, it was only on a daily basis. Oh, this church has been bombed. This uh, mosque has been attacked. These headsmen have finished all these farmers. These farmers have wiped out this entire community. It was almost on a daily basis. But it's not as bad as that anymore. So we have to give kudos to the government. They have tried in fighting in I don't think they have and tried they've, they, they, keep, they keep fighting them. Uh, well, be honest with yourselves. Look at our media today compared to what we had last year or two years ago in terms of insecurity. Look at the media. Look at what we have been Insecurity is still very, very right. They're, even in the United States, there is still insecurity. There is no country that would put into insecurity into total rest because you don't know what people are thinking. You don't know what reactions or what plans people are making or trying to do or achieve. So. You cannot put insecurity to rest totally. But as a country, I think we have come a long way from where we were coming from within, in the last two years, at least. Now, we have people driving the Kaduna Road again. Now you have people driving uh, uh, from Kogi to Abuja. Before, people were scared to do all that. But now people are doing it because, or from uh, Jos to Abuja. But now people are doing it because it's a bit safer now than... Do you go on these road trips yourself? Yes, I do. I was in Ekiti not too long ago from Ekiti. I hopped up to, to Abuja. So, and I didn't see any 
unrest. So insecurity, I think the government has tried. Can we do better? I agree that we can do more than we currently are doing. And everybody is trying. Even I myself, as I remember one of the first things I also did was contribute bikes to estates within uh, Etiosa, that they should add it to their security fleet to be patrolling within their estate to make sure that uh, you know their, their residents are safe. It's one of the first things I did. And in the nearest future, in the next one or two weeks, we're also going to give a speedboat to a few uh, to a few estates to help them, you know, patrol their waterways. Because we found out that that area too is porous. Thieves and big boys have come through that avenue to, you know, rob people and gotten away through that through avenue as well. So we're we'll we donating speedboats to these uh, few estates to, you know, patrol that area. So everybody in their own capacity. The Lagos State Government has contributed so much money to the uh, Nigerian police and so much uh, gadgets, cars, just to make sure that, you know, people are safe. And every other state too, I, I see it in the media. They are trying their best. Benue did not too long ago. Their governor formed their own Amotepu. I can't remember what it's called now, mm. but they gave out so many gadgets to make sure that yes, citizens but, but the, are safe. Yes, but the government has come to say that, you know, they don't have a right to um, we all know the law to does give not, them guns yeah, they don't, they and ammunition. Well, they they not, not yet. Yes. But Ondo we, said he was going to do that. He can't do it because the law does not permit him to do that. But that, happened, that the, happened in Kaduna. Those are some of the, the Kaduna things, guys have guns. Those are some of the things that we are also looking at as a as a uh, house to see how we can. You know, it's, like I said, it's going to take a lot. Do you believe in state police? I believe heavily. In fact, I believe in community policing as well. Because that is the best way to save yourselves. As if you go to the United States of America today, they have county police, they have county sheriff. So, so the locals protect their locals, their locality better than anybody will. So um, I believe in state police, and I think that in terms of security, I think we've done a bit uh, better than we're doing. On economics, I'm not speaking for the government, but I know that. Uh, yeah, we're part of the government. Yes, I'm part of the government, but you know, every. Uh, like I said, every government has its own functions. My functions and roles. And roles. My role is not to talk. But your, your, your role is an oversight role. Oversight as well. role. So yes. As part of my oversight, I can tell you that economy, uh, the world is experiencing hard times as we speak. There is no country that will tell you that the economy is booming. I'm not. I'm not holding brief for the um, uh, for the executive arm of government. I, can they do better? Yes, they can do better. But is it a global uh, issue? I think it's a global issue. And um, on, on the economic issue, can I can I ask? Um, now the CBN has two different rates mm -hmm. for forex: the black market rate and the CBN rate. Do you think we should have a single rate? I, to be honest, it's only in Nigeria that I know that we have um, two different. Uh, yeah, but rates. the situation is very peculiar in the sense that you have traders. Who are trying to import raw materials or manufacturers are trying to import raw materials, and so the government tries to give them some sort of, you know, cushion. Yes, cushion I, exactly. I, I, I agree with you. That's why CBN. That's what CBN is trying to uh, uh, cushion businessmen yes. and women and, yes. and corporate uh, firms. So, and I don't know why they can't also, you know curtail the black market. They, they have tried, at least I remember them shutting down a particular website in efforts to try and save the Naira. I remember them also clamping down on the really change with efforts to try to save the Naira.